The Romanian Revolution Romanian, Revolution Romana was a period of violent civil unrest in the Socialist Republic of Romania in December 1989 and part of the revolutions of 1989 that occurred in several countries. The Romanian Revolution started in the city of Timisoara and soon spread throughout the country, ultimately culminating in the show trial and execution of longtime Communist Party General Secretary Nicolae Ceausescu and his wife Elena, and the end of 42 years of communist rule in Romania. It was also the last removal of a Marxist-Leninist government in a Warsaw Pact country during the events of 1989, and the only one that violently overthrew a country's government and executed its leader. Early protests occurred in the city of Timisoara in mid-December on the part of the Hungarian minority in response to an attempt by the government to evict Hungarian Reformed Church pastor Laszlo Tokes. In response, Romanians sought revolution and a change in government in light of similar recent events in neighboring nations. The country's ubiquitous secret police force, the Securitate, which was both one of the largest in the Eastern Bloc and for decades had been the main suppressor of popular dissension, frequently and violently quashing political disagreement, ultimately proved powerless in stopping the looming, and then highly fatal and successful revolt. Social and economic malaise had been present in socialist Romania for quite some time, especially during the austerity years of the 1980s. The austerity measures were designed in part by Ceausescu to repay foreign debts. Shortly after a botched public speech by Ceausescu in Bucharest Romania's capital city that was broadcast to millions of Romanians on state television, rank and file members of the military switched, almost unanimously, from supporting the dictator to backing the protesting population. Riots, street violence and murder in several Romanian cities over the course of roughly a week led the Romanian strongman to flee the capital city on the 22nd of December with his wife, Deputy Prime Minister Elena Ceausescu. Evading capture by hastily departing via helicopter effectively portrayed the couple as both fugitives and also acutely guilty of accused crimes. Captured in Targoviste, they were tried by a drumhead military tribunal on charges of genocide, damage to the national economy and abuse of power to execute military actions against the Romanian people. They were convicted on all charges, sentenced to death, and immediately executed on Christmas Day 1989, becoming the last people condemned to death and executed in Romania. Present-day Romania has unfolded in the shadow of the Ceausescus along with its communist past, and the tumultuous departure from it. The National Salvation Front quickly took power after Ceausescu was toppled, promising free and fair elections within five months. Elected in a landslide the following May, the National Salvation Front, reconstituted as a political party, installed a series of economic and democratic reforms, with further social policy changes being implemented by later governments. Since that point Romania has become far more integrated with the West than its former, albeit tepid, relations with Moscow. Romania became a member of NATO and the European Union in 2004 and 2007, respectively. Democratic reforms have proven to be moderately successful, though issues with corruption remain. Economic reforms continue, with Romania still possessing, for example, one of the highest child poverty rates in the developed world. Topic. Background In 1981 Ceausescu began an austerity program designed to enable Romania to liquidate its entire national debt $10 billion. To achieve this, many basic goods—including gas, heat and food—were rationed, which drastically reduced the standard of living and increased malnutrition. The infant mortality rate also grew to be the highest in Europe. The secret police, Securitate, had become so omnipresent that it made Romania essentially a police state. Free speech was limited and opinions that did not favor the Communist Party were forbidden. The large numbers of Securitate informers made organized dissent nearly impossible. The regime deliberately played on this sense that everyone was being watched to make it easier to bend the people to the party's will. Even by Soviet bloc standards, the Securitate was exceptionally brutal. Ceausescu created a cult of personality, with weekly shows in stadiums or on streets in different cities dedicated to him, his wife, and the Communist Party. There were several megalomaniac projects, such as the construction of the grandiose House of the Republic today the Palace of the Parliament—the biggest palace in the world—the adjacent Central Civic and a never-completed museum dedicated to communism and Ceausescu, today the Casa Radio. 
These and similar projects drained the country's finances and aggravated the already dire economic situation. Thousands of Bucharest residents were evicted from their homes, which were subsequently demolished to make room for the huge structures. Unlike the other Warsaw Pact leaders, Ceausescu had not been slavishly pro Soviet but rather had pursued an independent foreign policy. Romanian forces did not join its Warsaw Pact allies in putting an end to the Prague Spring an invasion Ceausescu openly denounced. While Romanian athletes competed at the Soviet boycotted 1984 Summer Olympics in Los Angeles receiving a standing ovation at the opening ceremonies and proceeding to win 53 medals, trailing only the U.S. and West Germany in the overall count. Conversely, while Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev spoke of reform, Ceausescu maintained a hard political line and cult of personality. The austerity program started in 1981 and the widespread poverty it introduced made the communist regime very unpopular. The austerity programs were met with little resistance among Romanians and there were only a few strikes and labor disputes, of which the Jew Valley Miners' Strike of 1977 and the Brasov Rebellion of November 1987 at the truck manufacturer Stiegel Rozu were the most notable. In March 1989 several leading activists of the Romanian Communist Party PCR criticized Ceausescu's economic policies in a letter, but shortly thereafter he achieved a significant political victory. Romania paid off its external debt of about US $11 billion several months before the time that even the Romanian dictator expected. However, in months following the announcement austerity and a shortage of goods remained the same as before. It initially appeared that Ceausescu would weather the wave of revolution sweeping across Eastern Europe. He was formally re-elected for another five-year term as General Secretary of the Romanian Communist Party on 24 November at the party's 14th Congress. On the same day, Ceausescu's counterpart in Czechoslovakia, Milos Jakes, resigned along with the entire communist leadership, effectively ending communist rule in Czechoslovakia. On the 11th of November 1989, before the Party Congress, on Bucharest's Brezoianu Street and Kogelnisianu Boulevard students from Cluj-Napoca and Bucharest demonstrated with placards saying, we want reforms against Ceausescu government. The students, including Minia Parashevescu, Gratian Vulp and the economist Dan Caprariu Schlatcher from Cluj, were detained and investigated by the Securitate at the Rehova Penitentiary on suspicion of propaganda against the Socialist Society. They were released on the 22nd of December 1989 at 1400. There were other letters and attempts to draw attention to the economic, cultural and spiritual oppression of Romanians, but they served only to intensify the activity of the police and securitate. Another factor in the revolution was the decrete policy, a policy banning contraception and abortion. This policy, which began in 1967, resulted in a baby boom, but also resulted in high rates of poverty and child mortality. By 1989 these children had all reached adulthood, and many of them were among the students who started the revolution that overthrew Ceausescu. Timisoara Uprising On 16 December 1989 the Hungarian minority in Timisoara held a public protest in response to an attempt by the government to evict Hungarian Reformed Church pastor Laszlo Tokes. In July of that year Tokes had criticized the regime's systematization policy in an interview with Hungarian television, and complained that Romanians did not even know their human rights. As Tokes described it later, the interview, which had been seen in the border areas and was then spread all over Romania, had a shock effect upon the Romanians, the Securitate as well, on the people of Romania, i.t. had an unexpected effect upon the public atmosphere in Romania. The government then alleged that Tokes was inciting ethnic hatred. At the behest of the government, his bishop removed him from his post, thereby depriving him of the right to use the apartment to which he was entitled as a pastor, and assigned him to be a pastor in the countryside. For some time his parishioners gathered around his home to protect him from harassment and eviction. Many passers-by spontaneously joined in. As it became clear that the crowd would not disperse, the mayor, Petra Mo, made remarks suggesting that he had overturned the decision to evict Tokes. Meanwhile, the crowd had grown impatient and, when Mo declined to confirm his statement against the planned eviction in writing, the crowd started to chant anti-communist slogans. Subsequently, police and securitate forces showed up at the scene. By 1930 the protest had spread and the original cause became largely irrelevant. 
Some of the protesters attempted to burn down the building that housed the District Committee of the Romanian Communist Party PCR. The Securitate responded with tear gas and water jets, while police beat up rioters and arrested many of them. Around 2100 the rioters withdrew. They regrouped eventually around the Romanian Orthodox Cathedral and started a protest march around the city, but again they were confronted by the security forces. Topic. Crackdown Riots and protests resumed the following day, 17 December. The rioters broke into the district committee building and threw party documents, propaganda brochures, Ceausescu's writings and other symbols of communist power out of the windows. The military were sent in to control the riots because the situation was too large for the Securitate and conventional police to handle. The significance of the army presence in the streets was an ominous one, it meant that they had received their orders from the highest level of the command chain, presumably from Ceausescu himself. The army failed to establish order, and chaos ensued including gunfire, fights, casualties and burned cars. Transporter Amphibiu Blindat tab armored personnel carriers and tanks were called in. After 2000, from Piata Libertaci Liberty Square to the opera there was wild shooting, including the area of Decibal Bridge, Calia Lipave, Lipave Avenue, and Calia Girocalui, Girocalui Avenue. Tanks, trucks and tabs blocked the accesses into the city while helicopters hovered overhead. After midnight the protests calmed down. Ion Komen, Ili Matei and Stefan Gusa chief of the Romanian general staff inspected the city. Some areas looked like the aftermath of a war, destruction, rubble and blood. On the morning of the 18th of December the center was being guarded by soldiers and securitate agents in plainclothes. Mayor Mo ordered a party gathering to take place at the university with the purpose of condemning the vandalism of the previous days. He also declared martial law, prohibiting people from going about in groups of larger than 2, defying the curfew. A group of 30 young men headed for the Orthodox Cathedral, where they stopped and waved a Romanian flag from which they had removed the Romanian communist coat of arms. Expecting that they would be fired upon, they started to sing Destipta te, Roman. Awaken thee, Romanian, an earlier patriotic song that had been banned since 1947. They were, indeed, fired upon, some died and others were seriously injured, while the lucky ones were able to escape. On 19 December Radu Balin and Stefan Gusa visited workers in the city's factories, but failed to get them to resume work. On 20 December massive columns of workers entered the city. About 100,000 protesters occupied Piata Operii Opera Square, today Piata Victoriae, Victory Square and chanted anti-government slogans, Noi suntem popperal. We are the people. Ermata ecu noi. The army is on our side. Nu va fi frica, Ceausescu pica. Have no fear, Ceausescu is falling. Meanwhile, Emil Boba secretary to the Central Committee and Prime Minister Constantin Dascalescu were sent by Elena Ceausescu Nikolai being at that time in Iran to resolve the situation. They met with a delegation of the protesters and agreed to free the majority of the arrested protesters. However, they refused to comply with the protesters' main demand resignation of Ceausescu and the situation remained essentially unchanged. The next day trains loaded with workers from factories in Oltenia arrived in Timisoara. The regime was attempting to use them to repress the mass protests, but after a brief encounter they ended up joining the protests. One worker explained, Yesterday our factory boss and a party official rounded us up in the yard, handed us wooden clubs and told us that Hungarians and hooligans were devastating Timisora and that it is our duty to go there and help crush the riots. But I realized that wasn't the truth. On 18 December Ceausescu had departed for a visit to Iran, leaving the duty of crushing the Timisoara revolt to his subordinates and his wife. Upon his return on the evening of 20 December the situation became even more tense, and he gave a televised speech from the TV studio inside the Central Committee building, CC building in which he spoke about the events at Timisoara in terms of an "...interference of foreign forces in Romania's internal affairs," and an external aggression on Romania's sovereignty." The country, which had no information about the Timisoara events from the national media, heard about the Timisoara revolt from Western radio stations like Voice of America and Radio Free Europe, and by word of mouth. 
A mass meeting was staged for the next day, 21 December, which, according to the official media, was presented as a spontaneous movement of support for Ceausescu, emulating the 1968 meeting in which Ceausescu had spoken against the invasion of Czechoslovakia by Warsaw Pact forces. Revolution spreads Ceausescu's speech On the morning of 21 December, Ceausescu addressed an assembly of approximately 100,000 people to condemn the uprising in Timisoara. Party officials took great pains to make it appear that Ceausescu was still immensely popular. Several busloads of workers, under threat of being fired, arrived in Bucharest's Piata Palatului Palace Square, now Piata Revolutie, Revolution Square and were given red flags, banners and large pictures of Ceausescu. They were augmented by bystanders who were rounded up on Calia Victoriae. The speech was typical of most of Ceausescu's speeches over the years. Making liberal use of Marxist-Leninist jargon, he delivered a litany of the achievements of the Socialist Revolution and Romanian multilaterally developed socialist society. He blamed the Timisoara uprising on fascist agitators. However, Ceausescu was out of touch with his people and completely misread the crowd's mood. The people remained unresponsive, and only the front rows supported Ceausescu with cheers and applause. About two minutes into the speech, some in the crowd actually began to jeer, boo, whistle and yell insults at him, a reaction unthinkable for most of his rule. Workers from a Bucharest power plant started chanting, T me so a ra, T me so a ra, which was soon picked up by others in the crowd. In response, Ceausescu raised his right hand in hopes of silencing the crowd. His stunned expression remains one of the defining moments of the end of communism in Eastern Europe. He then tried to placate the crowd by offering to raise workers' salaries by 200 lei per month about 9 US dollars at the time, yet a 5% to 10% raise for a modest salary and student scholarships from 100 to 110 lei while continuing to praise the achievements of the socialist revolution. However, a revolution was brewing right in front of his eyes, as Ceausescu was addressing the crowd from the balcony of the Central Committee building, sudden movement came from the outskirts of the massed assembly, as did the sound of what various sources have reported as fireworks, bombs or guns, which together caused the assembly to break into chaos. Initially frightened, the crowds tried to disperse. Bullhorns then began to spread the news that the Securitate was firing on the crowd and that a revolution was unfolding. This persuaded people in the assembly to join in. The rally turned into a protest demonstration. The entire speech was being broadcast live nationwide. Censors attempted to cut the live video feed and replace it with communist propaganda songs and video praising the Ceausescu regime, but parts of the riots had already been broadcast and most of the Romanian people realized that something unusual was in progress. Ceausescu and his wife, as well as other officials and CPEX members, panicked. Ceausescu's bodyguard hustled him back inside the building. The jeers and whistles soon erupted into a riot. The crowd took to the streets, placing the capital, like Timisoara, in turmoil. Members of the crowd spontaneously began shouting anti Ceausescu slogans, which spread and became chants Yosh dictatoral, Down with the dictator, Moarte criminalului. Death to the criminal. Noi suntem popperal, Yosh cu dictatoral. We are the people, down with the dictator. Ceausescu sini esti, criminal din scornicesti. Ceausescu, who are you? A criminal from scornicesti. Protesters eventually flooded the city center area, from Piata Cogelnisianu to Piata Unari, Piata Rossetti, and Piata Romana. In one notable scene from the event, a young man waved a tricolor with the communist coat of arms torn out of its center while perched on the statue of Mihai Vitezel on Boulevard Mihail Kogelnisianu in the University Square. Many others began to emulate the young protester, and the waving and displaying of the Romanian flag with the communist insignia cut out quickly became widespread. Topic. Street confrontations As the hours passed many more people took to the streets. Later, observers claimed that even at this point, had Ceausescu been willing to talk, he might have been able to salvage something. Instead, he decided on force. Soon the protesters—unarmed and unorganized— 
were confronted by soldiers, tanks, APCs, USLA troops, Unitatia Special Apentru Lupta Antiterrorista, Anti-Terrorist Special Squads, and armed plainclothes Securitate officers. The crowd was soon being shot at from various buildings, side streets, and tanks. There were many casualties, including deaths, as victims were shot, clubbed to death, stabbed, and crushed by armored vehicles. One APC drove into the crowd around the Intercontinental Hotel, crushing people. A French journalist, Jean-Louis Calderon, was killed. A street near University Square was later named after him, as well as a high school in Timisoara. Belgian journalist Danny Huet was shot and killed on 23 or 24 December 1989. Firefighters hit the demonstrators with powerful water jets, and the police continued to beat and arrest people. Protesters managed to build a defensible barricade in front of the Dunareya Danube restaurant, which stood until after midnight, but was finally torn apart by government forces. Intense shooting continued until after 3 o'clock, by which time the survivors had fled the streets. Records of the fighting that day include footage shot from helicopters that were sent to raid the area and record evidence for eventual reprisals, as well as by tourists in the high tower of the centrally located Intercontinental Hotel, next to the National Theatre and across the street from the university. It is likely that in the early hours of the 22nd of December the Ceausescus made their second mistake. Instead of fleeing the city under cover of night, they decided to wait until morning to leave. Ceausescu must have thought that his desperate attempts to crush the protests had succeeded, because he apparently called another meeting for the next morning. However, before 7 o'clock, his wife Elena received the news that large columns of workers from many industrial platforms large communist-era factories or groups of factories concentrated into industrial zones were heading towards the city center of Bucharest to join the protests. The police barricades that were meant to block access to Piata Universitatie University Square and Palace Square proved useless. By 9.30 University Square was jammed with protesters. Security forces army, police and others re-entered the area, only to join with the protesters. By 10 o'clock, as the radio broadcast was announcing the introduction of martial law and a ban on groups larger than five persons, hundreds of thousands of people were gathering for the first time, spontaneously, in central Bucharest, the previous day's crowd had come together at Ceausescu's orders. Ceausescu attempted to address the crowd from the balcony of the Central Committee of the Communist Party building, but his attempt was met with a wave of disapproval and anger. Helicopters spread manifestos which did not reach the crowd, due to unfavorable winds instructing people not to fall victim to the latest diversion attempts, but to go home instead and enjoy the Christmas feast. This order, which drew unfavorable comparisons to Marie Antoinette's haughty but apocryphal, let them eat cake. Further infuriated the people who did read the manifestos, many at that time had trouble procuring such basic foodstuffs as cooking oil. <laughs> <laughs> Military defection and Ceausescu's fall At approximately 9.30 on the morning of of December Vasile Milia, Ceausescu's Minister of Defense, died under suspicious circumstances. A communique by Ceausescu stated that Milia had been sacked for treason, and that he had committed suicide after his treason was revealed. The most widespread opinion at the time was that Milia hesitated to follow Ceausescu's orders to fire on the demonstrators, even though tanks had been dispatched to downtown Bucharest that morning. Milia was already in severe disfavor with Ceausescu for initially sending soldiers to Timisoara without live ammunition. Rank and file soldiers believed that Milia had actually been murdered and went over virtually en masse to the revolution. Senior commanders wrote off Ceausescu as a lost cause and made no effort to keep their men loyal to the regime. This effectively ended any chance of Ceausescu staying in power. Accounts differ about how Milia died. His family and several junior officers believed he had been shot in his own office by the Securitate, while another group of officers believed he had committed suicide. In 2005 an investigation concluded that the minister killed himself by shooting at his heart, but the bullet missed the heart, hit a nearby artery and led to his death shortly afterward. Upon learning of Milia's death, Ceausescu appointed Victor Stankulescu Minister of Defense. He accepted after a brief hesitation. Stankulescu, however, ordered the troops back to their quarters without Ceausescu's knowledge, and also persuaded Ceausescu to leave by helicopter, thus making the dictator a fugitive. 
At that same moment angry protesters began storming the Communist Party headquarters, Stankulescu and the soldiers under his command did not oppose them, by refusing to carry out Ceausescu's orders he was still technically commander-in-chief of the army, Stankulescu played a central role in the overthrow of the dictatorship. I had the prospect of two execution squads, Ceausescu's and the revolutionary one," confessed Stankulescu later. In the afternoon, Stankulescu chose. Ion Iliescu's political group from among others that were striving for power in the aftermath of the recent events. Helicopter extraction Following Ceausescu's second failed attempt to address the crowd, he and Elena fled into a lift elevator headed for the roof. A group of protesters managed to force their way into the building, overpower Ceausescu's bodyguards and make their way through his office before heading onto the balcony. They didn't know it, but they were only a few meters from Ceausescu. The lift's electricity failed just before it reached the top floor, and Ceausescu's bodyguards forced it open and ushered the couple onto the roof. At 11.20 on of December 1989, Ceausescu's personal pilot, Lt. Col. Vasile Malutin, received instructions from Lt. Gen. Opruta to proceed to Palace Square to pick up the president. As he flew over Palace Square he saw it was impossible to land there. Malutin landed his white dauphin, number 203, on the terrace at 11.44. A man brandishing a white net curtain from one of the windows waved him down, Malutin said. Then Stelica, the co-pilot, came to me and said that there were demonstrators coming to the terrace. Then the Ceausescus came out, both practically carried by their bodyguards. They looked as if they were fainting. They were white with terror. Manea Manescu one of the vice presidents and Emil Boba were running behind them. Manescu, Boba, Nigo and another Securitate officer scrambled to the four seats in the back. As I pulled Ceausescu in, I saw the demonstrators running across the terrace. There wasn't enough space, Elena Ceausescu and I were squeezed in between the chairs and the door. We were only supposed to carry four passengers. We had six. According to Malutin, it was 12.08 when they left for Snagov. After they arrived there, Ceausescu took Malutin into the presidential suite and ordered him to get two helicopters filled with soldiers for an armed guard, and a further dauphin to come to Snagov. Molotov's unit commander replied on the phone. There has been a revolution. You are on your own. Good luck." Malutin then said to Ceausescu that the second motor was now warmed up and they needed to leave soon but he could only take four people, not six. Manescu and Boba stayed behind. Ceausescu ordered Malutin to head for Titu. Near Titu, Malutin says that he made the helicopter dip up and down. He lied to Ceausescu, saying that this was to avoid anti-aircraft fire, since they would now be in range. Ceausescu panicked and told him to land, he did so in a field next to the old road that led to Pitesti. Malutin then told his four passengers that he could do nothing more. The Securitate men ran to the roadside and began to flag down passing cars. Two cars stopped, one of them driven by a forestry official and one a red Dacia driven by a local doctor. However, the doctor was not happy about getting involved and, after a short time driving the Ceausescus, faked engine trouble. A car of a bicycle repair man was then flagged down and he took them to Targoviste. The driver of the car, Nikolai Petrosor, convinced them that they could hide successfully in an agricultural technical institute on the edge of town. When they arrived, the director guided the Ceausescus into a room and then locked them in. They were arrested by local police at about 1530, then after some wandering around transported to the Targoviste garrison's military compound and held captive for several days until their trial. Topic. Trial and execution On 24 December Ion Iliescu, head of the newly formed Council of the National Salvation Front, signed a decree establishing the Extraordinary Military Tribunal, a drumhead court martial to try the Ceausescus for genocide and other crimes. The trial was held on 25 December, lasted for about two hours and delivered death sentences to the couple. Although nominally the Ceausescus had a right of appeal, their execution followed immediately, just outside the improvised courtroom, being carried out by three paratroopers with their service rifles. Footage of the trial and of the executed Ceausescus was promptly released in Romania and to the rest of the world. 
The actual moment of execution was not filmed since the cameraman was too slow, and he managed to get into the courtyard just as the shooting ended. In footage of the trial, Nikolai Ceausescu is seen answering the ad hoc tribunal judging him and referring to some of its members among them Army General Victor Atanasi Stankulescu and future Romanian Secret Service head Virgil Magaronu as traitors. In this same video, Ceausescu dismisses the tribunal as illegitimate and demands his constitutional rights to answer to charges in front of a legitimate tribunal. <inaudible> New government After Ceausescu left, the crowds in Palace Square entered a celebratory mood, perhaps even more intense than in the other former Eastern Bloc countries because of the recent violence. People cried, shouted and gave each other gifts mainly because it was also close to Christmas Day, which was a long-suppressed holiday in Romania. The occupation of the Central Committee building continued, people threw Ceausescu's writings, official portraits and propaganda books out the windows, intending to burn them. They also promptly ripped off the giant letters from the roof making up the word, Communist, Communist, in the slogan, Traiasca Partidul Communist Roman. Long live the Communist Party of Romania. A young woman appeared on the rooftop and waved a flag with the coat of arms torn out. At that time, fierce fights were underway at Bucharest Otopini International Airport between troops sent against each other under claims that they were going to confront terrorists. Early in the morning, troops sent to reinforce the airport were fired upon. These troops were from the UMO 865 Campina military base and were summoned there by Gen. Ion Rus, the commander of the Romanian Air Force. The confrontation resulted in the deaths of 40 soldiers as well as 8 civilians. The military trucks were allowed entrance into the airport's perimeter, passing several checkpoints. However, after passing the last checkpoint, being on their way to the airport, they were fired upon from different directions. A civilian bus was also fired upon during the firefight. After the firefight the surviving soldiers were taken prisoner by the troops guarding the airport, who seemed to think that they were loyal to Ceausescu's regime. However, the seizure of power by the new political structure National Salvation Front FSN, which emanated from the second tier of the Communist Party leadership with help of the plotting generals, was not yet complete. Forces considered to be loyal to the old regime spontaneously nicknamed terrorists opened fire on the crowd and attacked vital points of socio-political life, the television, radio and telephone buildings, as well as Casa Scante the center of the nation's print media, which serves a similar role today under the name Casa Prise Liber, House of the Free Press, and the post office in the district of Drummel Tabere, Palace Square site of the Central Committee building, but also of the Central University Library, the National Art Museum in the former Royal Palace, and the Atenul Roman Romanian Athenium, Bucharest's leading concert hall, the university and the adjoining University Square one of the city's main intersections, Otopini and Banessa airports, hospitals and the Ministry of Defense. During the night of 22-23 December Bucharest residents remained on the streets, especially in the attacked zones, fighting and ultimately winning, even at the cost of many lives a battle with an elusive and dangerous enemy. With the military confused by contradictory orders, true battles ensued with many real casualties. At 2100 on 23 December, tanks and a few paramilitary units arrived to protect the Palace of the Republic. Meanwhile, messages of support were flooding in from all over the world. France, President François Mitterrand, the Soviet President Mikhail Gorbachev, Hungary, the Hungarian Socialist Party, the new East German government. At that time, the two German states were not yet formally reunited. Bulgaria, Petr Mladenov, General Secretary of the Communist Party of Bulgaria, Czechoslovakia, Ladislav Adamic, leader of the Communist Party of Czechoslovakia, and Václav Havel, the dissident writer, revolution leader, and future President of the Republic. China the Minister of Foreign Affairs, the United States President George H. W. Bush, Canada Prime Minister Brian Mulroney, West Germany Foreign Minister Hans Dietrich Genscher, NATO Secretary General Manfred Warner, the United Kingdom Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher, Spain, Austria, the Netherlands, Italy, Portugal, Japan the Japanese Communist Party, SFR Yugoslavia government and Moldavia. In the following days, moral support was followed by material support. Large quantities of food, medicine, clothing, medical equipment, and other humanitarian aid were sent to Romania. 
Around the world, the press dedicated entire pages and sometimes even complete issues to the Romanian Revolution and its leaders. On the 24th of December, Bucharest was a city at war. Tanks, APCs, and trucks continued to patrol the city and surround trouble spots in order to protect them. At intersections near strategic objectives, roadblocks were built, automatic gunfire continued in and around University Square, the Gara de Nord, the city's main railroad station, and Palace Square. Yet amid the chaos, some people were seen clutching makeshift Christmas trees. Terrorist activities continued until 27 December, when they abruptly stopped. Nobody ever found out who conducted them, or who ordered their termination. Casualties <coughs> 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 The total number of deaths in the Romanian Revolution was 1,104, of which 162 were in the protests that led to the overthrow of Nicolae Ceausescu (16–22 December 1989) and 942 in the fighting that occurred after the seizure of power by the new political structure National Salvation Front (FSN). The number of wounded was 3,352, of which 1,107 occurred while Ceausescu was still in power and 2,245 after the FSN took power. Official figures place the death toll of the revolution at 689 people, many of whom were civilians. <laughs> Burning of the Central University Library The Central University Library was burned down in uncertain circumstances and over 500,000 books, along with about 3,700 manuscripts, were destroyed. Aftermath Political changes The revolution brought Romania vast attention from the outside world. Initially, much of the world's sympathy went to the National Salvation Front government under Ion Iliescu, a former member of the Communist Party leadership and a Ceausescu ally prior to falling into the dictator's disfavor in the early 1980s. The National Salvation Front, composed mainly of former members of the second echelon of the Communist Party, immediately assumed control over the state institutions, including the main media outlets such as the national radio and television networks. They used their control of the media in order to launch attacks against their political opponents, newly created political parties that claimed to be successors to those existing before 1948. Much of that sympathy was squandered during the Minariad. Massive protests erupted in downtown Bucharest as political rallies organized by the opposition parties during the presidential elections, with a small part of the protesters deciding to stand ground even after Iliescu was re-elected with an overwhelming majority of 85%. Attempts by police to evacuate the remaining protesters resulted in attacks on state institutions, prompting Iliescu to appeal to the country's workers for help. Infiltrated and instigated by former Securitate agents, in the following days a large mass of workers, mainly minors, entered Bucharest and attacked and fought with anti government protesters and gathered bystanders. On the eve of the first free post communist elections day, the 20th of May 1990, Sylvie Brucan, who was part of the National Salvation Front FSN, argued that the 1989 revolution was not anti-communist, being only against Ceausescu. He stated that Ion Iliescu made a «monumental» mistake in «conceding to the crowd» and banning the Romanian Communist Party. Iliescu remained the central figure in Romanian politics for more than a decade, losing the presidency in 1996 before regaining it in 2000. He retired for good in 2004. While other former ruling communist parties in the Soviet bloc reconfigured themselves into social democratic or democratic socialist parties, the PCR melted away in the wake of the revolution. However, a number of former PCR politicians remain prominent on Romania's political scene. Until the election of Klaus Iohannis in 2014, every post 1989 president was a former PCR member. Economic reforms The National Salvation Front chose between the two economic models that political elites claimed were available to post-communist Eastern European countries, shock therapy or gradual reforms. The NSF chose the latter, slower reforms, because it would have not been possible to convince the people who were already exhausted 
After Ceausescu's austerity to undergo further sacrifices, nevertheless, the neoliberal reforms were implemented, although not all at once. By the end of 1990, the prices were liberalized and a free currency exchange rate, devaluing the LU by 60%. The land of the state-owned collective farms was distributed to private owners and a list of 708 large state-owned enterprises to be privatized was devised. In 1991, Romania signed an agreement with the IMF and began the privatization of state-owned enterprises, with the first privatization law being passed in 1991. In 1992, the Stolojan government began an austerity plan, limiting wages and further liberalizing prices. The economic situation deteriorated and inflation as well as unemployment increased substantially. The austerity measures, which by 1995 included a decrease in social spending, led to an increase in poverty. The neoliberal reforms were accelerated after the Democratic Convention won the 1996 elections, the government using its prerogatives to pass a package of laws, removing subsidies, passing reforms on unemployment benefits and greatly increasing the number of privatized companies. See also 1989 Moldova civil unrest 8888 uprising Die Wendy Dissolution of the Soviet Union End of Communism in Hungary 1989. Fall of Communism in Albania List of books about the Romanian Revolution List of films about the Romanian Revolution Mongolian Revolution of 1990 People Power Revolution Revolutions of 1989 Romanian Anti-Communist Resistance Movement Singing Revolution Tiananmen Square Protests of 1989 Velvet Revolution Videograms of a Revolution Topic. Notes Topic. References Stephen D. Roper, Romania, The Unfinished Revolution, Routledge, 2000, ISBN 978-90-5823-028-7 Further reading In Romanian. Sinusidir, un termin a cooperator pentru crima. Suicide, a term to cover up a crime. In Journalul National, retrieved from website the 30th of December 2004. No date indicated for original publication. On the death of Vasile Milia, in Romanian. In Romanian, the series of three articles in the Romanian newspaper Adevral, 2003. See archives entitled EU M Fost Socia Lui Nicolae Ceausescu. I was Ceausescu's double. These are about call. Dimitru Berlin, who also wrote a book Dupa 14 Ani, Socia Lui Ceausescu se destinui. After 14 years, the double of Ceausescu confesses. Editora Ergorum, 31 July 2003. Mark Almond, Uprising, Political Upheavals That Have Shaped the World, 2002. Mitchell Beasley, London. Timothy Garton Ash, 1990, The Magic Lantern, The Revolution of 1989 Witnessed in Warsaw, Budapest, Berlin, and Prague, New York, Random House, ISBN 0-394-58884-3. Nikolai Ceausescu, Nikolai Ceausescu's Speech, Condemning the Protests of Timisoara, broadcast on 20 December 1989, in Romanian Denis Deletant, Romania under Communist Rule, 1999. Center for Romanian Studies in cooperation with the Civic Academy Foundation, ISC, Romania, Portland, Oregon, ISBN 973-98392-8-2. Gives a detailed account of the events in December 1989 in Timisoara. Jeffrey A. Engel 2017, When the World Seemed New, George H. W. Bush and the End of the Cold War, New York, Houghton Mifflin Harcourt, ISBN 978-0547423067. George Galloway and Bob Wiley, Downfall, The Ceausescus and the Romanian Revolution, 1991, Futura Publications, London. ISBN 0-7088-5003-0. In Romanian, Marius M I O C, Revolution din Timișoara, Asa Cuma Fost, 1997, Brumar Publishing House, Timișoara. In Romanian, 
In Romanian, Marius M I O C, the anti-communist Romanian revolution of 1989, Marinesa Publishing House, Timisoara 2002. In Romanian, Marian Opera, O Trecut 15 Ani, Conspiratia Securitate. After 15 years, the conspiracy of securitate. Lumia Magazine NR 10, 2004, in Romanian, link leads to table of contents, verifying that the article exists, but the article itself is not online. In Romanian, Vioral Patrici, EUM Fost Socia Lui Nicolae Ceaușescu. I was Ceaușescu's double. Lumia NR 12, 2001. Siani Davies, Peter, 2005, 2007. The Romanian Revolution of December 1989. Ithaca, NY, Cornell University Press. ISBN 0-8014-4245-1 In Romanian Victor Stankulescu. Nu va fi mila, o tu miliard de lei in cont. Show no mercy, they have 2 billion lei 33 million US dollars in their bank account. In Journalul National the 22nd of November 2004 in Romanian, Domnita Stefanescu, Cinci Ani din Istoria Romaniae, Five Years in the History of Romania, 1995, Messina de Scris, Bucharest. In Romanian, Mihai Voni, Crimele Revolutiae, Masacrul de la Otopini, Murders of the Revolution, the Otopini Massacre, in Adeverul, the 15th of December 2009. Topic. External links. Article on justice failing for 942 killed in revolution on eve of 20th anniversary Video of Nicolae Ceaușescu's final speech in Republican Square Anonymous photo essay about the Romanian Revolution of 1989 TV broadcasts from 22 and 23 December 1989 The Romanian Revolution of December 1989 Academic article on feature films about 1989 Academic article on documentaries about 1989